Hey everyone, my name is Veronica and this is my 16th floss tube. Welcome, I've got a cat on my lap. This is Hermione. She's like 16 years old and she's like acts as young as a kitten sometimes. She only, only wants attention. Anyway, this is my video about cross stitch and my channel about cross stitch where I show you the things that I'm working on, the things I've done and purchased sometimes too. So today I have some whips, I have a finish and I have um, some haul too. So let's get right into it. By the way, thank you for joining me. If you're new, um, thank you, welcome. Um, my, I have an Instagram, vdancer0304, that I don't really use as much as I should, but I'll, um, I'll, I'll try to post some, some updates after today too, and, and probably more frequently than I post videos. Anyway, uh, whips. So I had some travel that I had to do for work. I went to Boston and so I brought some like smaller, I normally do like, I tried it. Most of my projects are big, big to me. I work full time. So I'm sure there are people out there who spend more time on things like Hades or spend several hours a day stitching. I don't have that. I work full time and I have kids. So I, my big projects are my Mirabilia's and sometimes other, like a Teresa Wensler or two. So I, um, I, I did take some smaller projects that I could like easily travel with on my trip. And there was one that I worked on that was a uh, steampunk dragonfly by Sam Sarah design studio. Um, I'll show you a picture of what it looked like before I left. And then I just did a little bit of stitching on my trip. So I, here's where it is right now. There's, so I finished the top wing and I, I made a mistake. Here, wait, I gotta stand up and my cat's on my lap. Hold on. <laughs> Come on, Hermione, you done? There you go. So up here, I was um, cutting on the back. I forgot exactly where, but I accidentally cut some thread that caused it to kind of unravel a little bit of my stitching. So I had to restitch some parts. I also didn't bring this darker color. This is like DMC 413. I'm substituting it. Most of the colors that it calls for are weak style works. And I'm using that in the, the wings clearly here, the green, yellow, the variegation, and some of the other places. But I, I decided not to use it on the grays because there wasn't much variegation in the weeks. I just, you know, save some money and get the DMC. So, <clears throat> but I forgot to bring that one with me. Some of this darker color. And I wanted to kind of do the skeleton of the wings before I filled in the, the green, yellow here. Um, other than that, I'm almost done. There's some parts down here and then this whole wing, of course. But I, I decided to stop working on that on my trip. I brought a second project, which I'll show you next. And <laughs> this one is also a finish. So it was a very small project. I, I brought this. This is um, called Pirate's Creed by Sue Hillis or Post Stitches. <laughs> Something you can put up at work, especially if you're a boss, right? <laughs> Beatings will continue until morale improves. So I finished that. Started and finished in the past couple. Or it, it took me about two weeks to do. It's all DMC. I did this on. Oh, sorry. I should go back to this one. Come, I always forget. Sorry. This steampunk dragonfly is on a uh, 28 count flax linen. I think it's by weeks. Jumping all over the place here. This is on an older Charles Craft Monaco. I was going to do this one on Ada, but there are a ton of fractionals in the lettering, especially. So it comes with this little charm here. And I'm probably going to stitch this again because, like, when I posted this on Instagram and Facebook, a lot of my friends were contacting me and saying, you know, I want you to stitch that for me. <laughs> Um, this one's going to be for my husband. I'm going to stick it in just like a five by seven frame and um, let him put it up at work. I don't know. <laughs> I have one more whip to show. Not a finish, but this is. Oops, I don't have it ready. One second. So this is, this is the project I've been working on mostly. This is The Stargazer by Mirabilia. Indeed. 
that's it. Eighty-eight, I think. I don't have my reading glasses on, but so here's what it will look like when it's finished. This one, I so here. Actually, let me show you a picture of where it was before during my last video, which was about three weeks ago, I think. And here's where it is today. I have to back up a bit. I took her off of the scroll rod this time and because it's actually time to move it. So as you can see, she looks like a slug. <laughs> Just kidding. She's got a little trail right here. Now that's the, that's her dress is starting to kind of fluff out a little bit and then it, it goes down. So I'm doing this in like uh, 10 stitch rows um, and parking, of course. It's um, I've got about like seven or eight more rows to go the stitching. And then as you can tell by what I've not stitched, she's got a ton of beads and all the stars are beads too. But just, I was, I did, had no idea this, this uh, project had so many beads. It seems like a lot now anyways, I don't know. I've completed one other mirror and that was Portrait of Veronica. And that one had a lot of beads too, but I, I feel like this has way more. So I'm stitching this one on, a uh, 32 count, this, this is picture this plus, I'm gonna forget, Mystic, Mystic by picture, picture this plus, which, you know, if you look at the picture in the, the model, she looks very, like her dress looks really dark and mine looks really light, like I don't know if you can see by comparison, and I get so like I get I've gotten comments on Instagram that say, you know, oh, I love your conversion and it's not a conversion. I'm doing everything called for. Um, I think it's just because the lighting on this picture and it's a lighter background, whereas I wanted her to be, you know, gazing at stars, which usually don't see in the daylight. So <laughs> that's why I chose like a dark blue fabric. But yeah, all is called for. I'm not even doing one over one skin. So which I don't think she needs, but I think my next mirror, I want to do that again. Maybe try the, um, the petite point, the continental half stitch or quarter stitches or whatever. Um, I have some haul, some, some, some purchases, various things I've purchased online over the past few weeks that for random reasons, like I had a little extra money or there was a sale or something. So let me show you those just, just three things, but I'm happy with my haul, so. so Bluebeard's Princess by Mirabilia. It's one thing I purchased. I don't know why I'm really into mermaids these days. There's a couple of new designers I've found. Um, let me see if I can remember them. Bella Filipina and um, Passion Recamo that I think have amazing mermaids. And I just, <laughs> I don't know why I'm into mermaids right now. But anyway, this one is... MD 98 and I think it's really cool. So I definitely want to stitch that someday, add it to my mirror collection. Um, the next two are not Mirabilis. This one, uh, something I've been wanting for somewhat a while. It's a big project, um, Rainbow Row by CW Designs. So is this, um, oh, sorry about the glare. This is a uh, row of homes in Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston is a beautiful city. If you've never been there before, it's it's gorgeous. Lots of uh, old houses and uh, the architecture is just gorgeous if you love architecture. And this is a row of homes and it's, this is what it actually looks like. I mean, these are actual houses. Um, this is a huge project. Let's see if I have the stitch count. Yeah, 494 wide by 116. So that's, that's on the big side. I will probably stitch this vertically just because I don't know if I have a scroll. My, my scroll rod isn't that big or I don't know if I can hold it. And I like to stitch two handed now with the scroll rod. The other thing that I purchased is a um, Teresa Wensler. This is the Fortunate Traveler. All, all of her dragon designs are out of print. Um, and so I saw this on eBay. Actually, somebody pointed it out in a Facebook group. And I was kind of watching and waiting to see if 
you know, somebody else would buy it. Cause I'm like, I don't really need another pattern. <laughs> I don't really need another, another project, another big, big project. Cause her projects are, they may not be big in size, but they are complicated as can be. If there's like over one specialty stitches, lots of quarter and three quarter and half everything. You can imagine beads. Um, so I was like, I don't really need that. So I kind of waited and kept checking on the eBay listing and nobody bought it. So I was like, okay, by the end of the day, I was like, okay, that's a sign. So I just did buy it now and paid the full price for it. Anyway, it's, it looks to me kind of like a page out of a storybook. And I love that. And, and I'll read it to you. Actually, let me my glasses. One second. Yeah, these are my, the glasses I use when I stitch. Um, turn on another light too. It says, Upon a dusty road one day, as sunlight slipped from sight, a traveler came face to face with nature's greatest fright. For a creature blocked the crossroads, most terrible, most odd. He'd never seen the like of it, where... Where, wherever his feel had, can't read the feet had trod. Yet now the creature trembled. It slowly raised its hand. I pray, sir, please don't eat me. I, I'm charged to guard this land. I'll join you, cried the dragon. And before the night was through, both man and mighty dragon discovered friendship true. So I guess um, Ms. Wensler has decided that dragons are against her religion, so she has discontinued all of her Designs with dragons in them, sadly, and so they're all out of print right now. You can still buy her non-dragon designs, most of them at Patterns Online, but the dragon ones are much sought after and hard to come by, sadly. So anyway, um, I've always admired that piece. It's it's a huge project, like, like all the others, <laughs> but anyway, I will probably stitch it someday, maybe when I retire. Maybe that'll be the time when I when I get to some of these things. So that's it for haul. Let me tell you some life updates. So if you're here for the stitchy stuff um, and you, that's all you want to hear, it was nice nice that you lis listened in for that. Thank you. You're welcome to leave now if you want. Um, but life updates. Um, we, uh, oh, this is kind of stitchy related. So I guess the people who left are going to miss this. But I was just driving yesterday. I went to the library to drop off some returns and I saw they had a sign up and I was leaving the library and I saw the sign that said, you know, needlework show. I was like, what? <laughs> Cause I just went to the drive through to drop off the, the videos that, that my kid, the movies that my kids had and video games and stuff. And so I turned back around and I went into the library and sure enough, there was a needlework show and it was uh, kind of neat. There's a, a Medina needleworkers guild. And, and that was really exciting to see. I think I might actually try to join them or, or at least follow them on Facebook or, or try to participate. Unfortunately, like everything else, the events that they hold are weekday evenings, which are like crazy town for me because I, I tend to work late too and don't get home sometimes till eight o'clock at night, which is by the time that happens, most of the events are closed. But <clears throat> anyway, it's nice to find other local stitchers. I think there's a, there's a bunch of stitching related activity in Northeast Ohio, which I'm really happy to see. Um, so, so that was that it was, it was really neat. There was a, the show was gorgeous, by the way, there were a bunch of like, it was all sorts of needlework. Um, mostly, mostly cross stitch, but there was, there were some needle points, some cruel, some, um, uh, like knitting and uh, crocheting. Um, so it was, it was gorgeous and they wanted people to vote on their favorite. So, um, and there were some like junior entries, like stuff kids had done, which, which I thought was really neat too. You know, pass it on to the next generation. Right. And so I, I was really excited about that. Um, other stuff going on, kind of sad news. My, I have, we have three cats in our house. Um, two are 16 years old and one is 11. Well, one of the, Hermione is one of the 16 year olds <laughs> that pops into my videos sometimes, but the other 16 year old's name is Harry and he's, he's not doing too well these days. He's, he's losing weight really fast. And, um, he stopped like bathing himself and he still kind of wants to be a cat. He kind of acts like, like he's senile a little bit. Like he like forgets that he just like did something. He goes and does it again. I don't know how to describe it, but he still plays, which is kind of funny. And so 
we're, we're kind of sad. We're, we're starting to make preparations and stuff. And the kids are starting to pick up on the fact that he might not be around too much longer. So, um, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's just 16 is, is like 80 in human years. Right. Or yeah. 80 in cat years or something like that. I don't know. So, um, that's it. We're planning for a trip to Disney with the kids. I have two boys. They're six and nine years old. And they are excited as can be. We're taking them out of school. So I'm like the really cool mom, right? Taking them out of school to go to Disney World in a few weeks. Um, so it's probably going to be another three to four weeks before I post another video as, as we do that trip and make preparations for it and everything. And I probably won't be stitching much. Um, let's see. What else is going on? Not much. Um, please think critically about everything. Have fun. Enjoy your stitching. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.